Hey guys, in this tutorial, we take a look at how to cut out an object from an image using masking in Anime Studio. In this tutorial, we will be taking this vehicle, cutting it out so that you could then use a custom background for it. And we'll be using the same document we used for the previous mouth masking tutorial, and that's why you're seeing three masking sample group layers in the layers panel. Just focus on masking sample two as that is the one we will be using. So for this, you can basically use this method if you don't want to go into Photoshop or if you don't have Photoshop or if you just want to create this effect exclusively in Anime Studio. So let's get started. So first you'll see in our masking sample group layer that we have an image and a mask layer. So make sure you have those two things in order to follow along in a group layer. Now come over here to your add point tool while on the mask vector layer. And for this case, we're going to turn on sharp corners because it's going to make things a little bit easier. Now for the sake of this tutorial, Jim is going to apply this shape pretty quickly. We're just gonna come in here and we're just going to start adding our points and we'll make sure that we have our guides on before we get started here. Now, of course, if you were doing this for your own project, you would want to take all the time in the world to make sure that everything is positioned correctly. As you can see, when we come down here with the wheels, especially with the sharp corners, we're not getting the best result for the mask. But again, if we were to do this um, verbatim and do it if we were actually creating it for a project file, we would be here for about two hours. <laughs> so for the sake of the tutorial, we're just gonna go along like this. Now, of course, what you could do in this case is you could apply a rough outline, kind of like what Jim is doing right now, and then you could, after the fact, go in with the add point tool, add in more points, use the curvature tool, and you could clean things up a little bit if you wanted to. So there's really no right or wrong way to approach the beginning here. It's just all a matter of getting this shape created. And you can see here we're getting close to the end. And what we'll have to do as well, as I'm sure you're probably already seeing, because we have an open window and because we can see through that window, we will need to go through and also draw in for that window as well. But let's finish this up first, just by coming back here. We're near the end where we can click to create this shape. Okay, so you have the main shape. Now let's focus in on the window. So we'll come in here. Again, just a simple matter of outlining this window, getting all the details. And this is a lower resolution image. So as you can see, it might be a little bit harder to get everything accurately set in because it might be harder to see it, but it will work for our purposes. So now what you'll need to do after this is come over here to your Create Shape tool, and then you're going to want to select the entire shape. Now what's going to happen here, you can see it's not working correctly. And this might happen in your case as well. What happened was Jim looked at this and he went back and realized that one of the points wasn't actually connected. When you're drawing things kind of quickly, it sometimes kind of happens that way. So you'll see here, he's going to make sure that that mask layer is still selected. He's just gonna hide that image. And we're gonna come in here and zoom in. And you can see here's the problem right here. This point didn't match that point. So we just gotta bring it up like that. And if you ever have a problem with the Create Shape tool, that's probably where the issue lies. So if we take that Create Shape tool again and highlight, you can see it's now working. The car is in red. We can hit Create Shape. The window was not in red, and that's what we want. So now, if we double click on the Masking Sample 2 group layer and go to Masking, and tap Hide All, and hit Apply, that's all you need to do. Anime Studio will know then that the other assets, such as the mask, have to be added. It says add to mask, it automatically knows that and you're good to go. So as you can see, when we render this out, we now have the vehicle looking good. So now, this would be where you wanna go in and clean up things 
as you can see, we're using the curvature tool now to come in here and kind of round things out, especially with the tires. In a case like this, the tires are going to be the main issue. But with that curvature tool, it can make things a little bit easier when it comes to moving your points around. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you could also add more points. You can move your points around entirely if you wish. And you could just, you could even delete points if you want. You can see we're moving a point right there. And it just depends on your needs. It depends on your image. So as you can see, he's kind of cleaning things up a little bit. If we render it out, you can see that the tires look a little bit better. Of course, we would spend much more time on this if, again, we were doing this for an actual production. Now, if you wanted to, you could go even further with this, and you could actually have the tires move. We'll make the car move here with the transform layer tool just by setting down a keyframe, going to frame 48, and moving it to the left. And you can see here it moves. But what we could do is we could create another group layer for the tires and actually make the tires spin. And if that's something that you guys want to see, let us know and we will make that tutorial. But anyway, this has been a joint and crumple tutorial. My name is Chad Trofgerben. I narrated the tutorial. Jim Mills recorded the tutorial. If you'd like more incredible tutorials, you can check us out at incrediblettutorials.com. We are also on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, if you would like a copy of Anime Studio to follow along with this tutorial and future lessons, as well as create some amazing animations, check out the link that I have provided in the description box on YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.